Okay, we ready to go? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, let me call this meeting to order. If you have not signed in in the back, would you please sign in in the back for us so that we'll know who was visiting with us or who was conducting business with us. If you've never been here before, let me explain how we operate. I will call each case by case number and case name. Staff will come to the lecture and give us the meat of the request. And there will probably be discussions or questions among board members to staff. Once we have heard from staff, I will ask if there are any persons here that wish to address the board on behalf of the request, either the applicant or someone who may be representing the applicant. If you wish to talk with us, please come to the lectern. Give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you would like for us to take under consideration for the case. If there are multiple people here in support, we would like to know that you are here. Uh, however, if you, if what you want to bring to the board has already been brought to the board by a prior person, please don't come back and hit us with it again. One time is sufficient, usually. Once we have heard from the pro side, then I will ask if there are any questions or anyone here in opposition. If there. <coughs> <coughs> if there's here, if there's anyone here in opposition or has questions about what is being requested, please come to the lectern. Give us your name and address for the record. Give us the information you would like for us to take under advisement. Again, if there are multiple people here in opposition, please give us the meet of the opposition in one pre presentation. If you feel like something has not been brought to our attention, please come to the lectern. Give us that information. Once we have heard from both sides and had discussions, normally there is a decision made today. However, that we do have in our bylaws, we can postpone until the next regularly scheduled meeting should there be questions unanswered or parties need to talk or something going on. But normally we do have it all happening here. The first case that we'll call is VAR 2014-14. Bill Simon on behalf of Evelyn Walker and Pam Ringo's 3472 Memphis Road, Valdosta. You have the show. Good afternoon, everyone. All right, our first request is a variance to the county's corridor road overlay requirements. In your packet, there's a survey flat of the property and the property in question is the property that's identified as track number two, which is a 2.16 acre track. Applicant is in the final stages of redeveloping and facilitating the property subdivision. The board will recall a few months ago, or well, about a year ago, um, there was a variance request for the property that's on the corner, which is the Flash Foods property. Um, Southern property is the remnant of that property and they are just finalizing, dividing the, the property up. The relief he's requesting today is a relief to our lot with properties that are located within the Beavers Road corridor overlay district require lots to be a minimum of 250 feet. And the applicant is proposing a lot that has about 209 feet of frontage, so they're, they're pretty close. Um, it's that opinion, this lot meets the intent and purpose of the overlay um, road requirements, and staff is recommending approval um, to this request. This property is the vacant mobile home sales lot. 
Um, it's been there for years. I think it's the home of Dale Hodges, local home of Dale Hodges. Um, and again, staff's opinion, the lot was close enough as far as the width um, and meeting the quarter road over the requirements. So with that, we recommend approval, citing the criteria at the And once we do this, the other two remaining parcels will be sufficient for distribution to the heirs or whatever. I'm not sure if they're going to sell the property, um, but the, the other two lots do meet our minimum requirements for size, dimensions, things of that nature. Okay. Any questions, any discussion from the board at this time? I, I have a question. This is a county case, yes. um, and this is a piece of the county that's uh, almost completely encircled by the city, not really, but almost. So my question is, should this be annexed by the city? Does it meet the city's requirements for whatever it is that we have that overlay something? There's no overlay district there in terms of the city development standards. Um, the minimum block um, frontage for the center is 60. Okay, and the property is such now it doesn't, it's not contiguous with city limits. Right. Um, city limits, you have to go all the way down into Franco Road to get, get to the nearest city limit boundary or east to George Military Yard. Yeah, it's not that far. Not that too far, far but it's in. Right, it, right. It's just a question. I think within a decade or two, we might get city limits <laughs> out there. But Oh, 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 the city limits goes way up. We must go past yeah, that. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. It's all up against Road. Well, we can't make a way of decades. <laughs> <laughs> Just a question. <laughs> okay, any other questions? Any other discussions? Is there anyone here in support? Simon, would you like to give us any information or are you satisfied? Uh, I'm satisfied with that. I just wanted to let y'all know. Uh, one of the main reasons we did this because there are six tracks of land in this one track and they get individual tax records on each one of them. There's also local owners on those six tracks. Uh, even though it's one flat, we got multiple owners on one track, multiple owners on another track. We're trying to solve a problem for what we're trying to do and we divided it up according to what's uses. We got the mobile home part in one lot, lot of rodeo on them. Parking lot is the other, and the basement lot, and that's basically what we want to do. Thanks. Do you anticipate having to divide any of this up in any way? Not in the future. No, that's that's this that's, is it. That's it. Okay. All right. Thanks. Any other any questions for Mr. Sign up? Any discussion? Thank you. Is there anyone else here in support? Anyone here in opposition or does anyone have a question about what is being requested? I have a question. Please come to the lectern. Give me your name and address for the record, ma'am. Uh, I'm Juanita Corgan. My address is 6001 North Oak Street Extension. Mm -hmm. And uh, the property in question is a liquor store there in a vacant lot. And then my house packs up to that vacant lot. And it's the only house to the next street, which is Pine Place. It's the only house, like I said, on that block, and it's all backs up to my property. Now, is it in any way going to affect my property? Uh, is anything going to be built in there by my, in that little basement? Ma'am, we cannot answer will something be built, and if so, when or what? Probably at some point in the future it will be developed, but when that time comes, they will meet, have to meet all design standards and setbacks and everything else to do it. Otherwise, they will have to come back to this board and ask for a variance for whatever it might be that they're requesting, at which point you would be notified what was being, uh, or that there was going to be a meeting to discuss a change in use of that land or something. But right now, so unless Mr. Sign has got something else, right now there's nothing on the board. Is all this considered commercial? Yes, 
it is all considered commercial up to your backyard yes. or side yard. Side yard. At some point in time, mine could become commercial. At some point in the future, you might could request if you, for some reason, wanted to sell it to somebody who wanted to put a professional office or something like that in it, you could go to the zoning board and make a request to have it rezoned. But you, it would be residential until someone requested. Just getting so close to all the commercial in there, and I'm still in the county, and, and with that terrible water system, <laughs> y'all won't take us into the city, and you know, you can't get. Well, we, we don't have anything to do with that. <laughs> That's up to your county commissioners and city council people. But the main thing is that I was wondering about since I am that. Right now, no foreseeable change. All right, is anyone else here in opposition or possibly has a question about what's being requested? <coughs> Was there any response to your office, Carmella, that we need to be aware of? It? Okay, any other questions, any other discussions, ladies and gentlemen? We get a motion on this request. Make a motion that the variance be granted citing criteria D. I have a motion from Ms. Gaskins to cite, I mean to recommend approval as presented, citing criteria D. I second. I have a second from Mr. Alvarado. All in favor raise a hand. Unanimous. Good luck with it. Hope everything works out. Thank you very much. Okay, next case is City Case Application 2014-11. Gray Burroughs, enter at 3277, enter for under road Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, if it's all right with you, I'll sit here so I can work the gadget. Tracy is not up here today, and our clicker mechanism, I think, has flown the coupon. Your, your gadget doesn't get it. Yes, it's, it's gadgeting somewhere else. Okay. Um, all right, this is a variance request for certain provisions in the LDR that govern the um, width of right of way. Um, the developments, as you see in the map in your packet, there's a zoomed in version on the screen. This is probably located along the north side of it, the road, um, the borders in Primer and also Lake Glory Drive. And more specifically, it is the vacant area um, that is between the Wood Pickle Pub and the Heritage Bank. Road that wanders through there, sort of an L shaped pathway. Um, it has been there for several years. That is a private driveway currently. Uh, the owner of the property now that certain parcels are being sold off. Um, it is time to sort of look at the bigger picture and actually create a roadway of some kind so that future parcels will have access um, and frontage on a road. Um, the question is whether it become a public road or a private road, and they are requesting a private road but also requesting that it have a reduced right-of-way width. Um, normally, a local street in a commercial development, the road width is a right-of-way, which is required to be 60 feet. Um, they're requesting the equivalent of a 50-foot road, but not all of it as right-of-way. Some of it as access easement, uh, but 35 feet of it as an actual right-of-way on the east-west segment. In your packet is a series of other maps. This is sort of a conceptual sketch of your proposed master plan. It is the east-west segment road that is the main one in question. You see the hard line, which is actually the right-of-way boundary line, and then it's centered within an access easement. The easement itself would be 50 feet wide. And if you look over toward the wooden neckle side of it, and there they're proposing right-of-way only, not an access easement. Um, the city is not so concerned about that, purpose that that segment on the end serves is to keep them from having to put in a cul sac at the end of this east-west road. Um, it functions much the same way as the access easement that is right here next to the Heritage Bank. Here, the property line runs down the center of the driveway of the road, and so these parcels come up to the middle. Here, you already have an established pattern where the property line for Wood Nickel is on the edge of this road and rather than put all of this path or this access onto that lot, um, we wanted to just make it 
private right of way that's owned by a property owners association, so they all have equal interest in it. And those are the unreduced cost parts. Um, it's a complicated puzzle that has evolved over time. It has not evolved very well. We can roll back the hands of time. All of this ideally would have been master plan and design in the beginning. Um, so what we run into is a situation where you have a physical road on the ground that doesn't ideally match existing property lines. Um, if you look at the details of this drawing, you also see water and sewer easements across through portions of the property. Those are also no longer ideally situated. So we're trying to basically put a band-aid on the overall design and come up with a scenario where that actually makes this thing work, both presently and in the future that's coming. Um, some of you may recall a similar type variance we looked at four years ago with the Drury development out at exit 18, where they were proposing a private road driveway that went up into their commercial development with a reduction in right-of-way width. Um, they were requesting 35 feet and they kind of just squeeze in. Um, with you know, sidewalk on one side, landscaping outside, and so forth. And it seemed to work all right for Drury, but that was part of a large package of variances. A lot of it had to be the signage, um, but the site design was part of it. Here, it's a little bit different. Um, the land is one situated differently. It's not wedged in between the creek and the interstate. It's more of a conventional commercial area. Um, along this part of the property, they planted a heritage bank, and I'm going to copy this in your packet. They had started with a 40 foot wide road path and an easement straddling on the side of it. And so staff's recommendation is for approval, but basically continue this pattern westward for this road and then leave this just as private right of way. Um, so with that, we're recommending approval of the two conditions, which are in your packet. The first one is that the east-west segment of the private road shall include a minimum right-of-way width of 40 feet and be centered within a 50-foot wide private access easement. So in other words, it's what they're proposing is make it 40 feet and that interior right-of-way instead of 35 to keep up the pattern that was started. And then number two, the north-south connecting segment to the perimeter, which is a by wood nickel, shall include a minimum right-of-way width of 35 feet and shall be shared access for all the abutting properties. In other words, it's just shared access driveway that takes the form of private driveway. Um, not a requirement that you reserve a 50-foot wide path through there for it. It's sort of in between what is already done over by Heritage Bank and that east-west road. Um, a little bit awkward in that it can use a third type of alternative, but it actually fits the road that's currently there next to the nickel where the property lines are. Utilities in there are that becomes an engineering puzzle going forward with the future. If you look at the easements, they, they essentially follow that east-west road partway through the property and then sort of take angles and turn off. They are there, the pipes are in the ground. Um, the development of these lots has to work around them. Um, but the whole idea is to not get the road too far removed from these utilities. So just keep the easement and utilities basically lined up as best we can. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, in, they're part of the puzzle too. Now, the part of the reason for the question is if somewhere along there it ends up being on private property instead of in the easement. They'll have to do a separate easement. Um, and that already exists now with the Heritage Bank parcel. Those utilities were put in before the bank was built. Um, what's interesting, if you look at the aerial, part of the area, but you can kind of see it. This road originally just went straight through on the way forward. When Heritage Bank came along, they physically rebuilt this part of the road to bend the road around. And they built a bank site. Now the water and sewer was already in place. It's still in place. It's in easements across this part of the bank property. And that's shown on your flat drawing as well. So they I think that started giving the attention that maybe this whole area needs to be looked at long term. And that's where we are now. What's triggering it is like this area on the screen, a new subject property for the restaurant. And what has come for all the discussion of is there needs to be a gap between them and the nickel where this private road goes through. And so the question is how big a gap is that need to be and how does that affect and relate to the rest of the 
development. So that triggered the master plan drawing, which is in the packet to look at the big picture and a decision to be made about that road. And everything else on the plat is up to code and meets all the city requirements? Yes. Everything's got access, but you know, the requirement is that parcels have to be 60 feet of frontage on a right of way, whether it be public or private. So they will meet that right there, which is really the only main one that's in consideration. They have a drop dead date for the breaking ground? Um, I do not know. They haven't even turned in their plans yet. Uh, there's been a conceptual site plan for the restaurant. What's a restaurant? Uh, well, not at liberty to say yet, I don't think, but Right. It's one you've heard of before, but I'll see I'll leave you that. <laughs> of course, Dairy Queen. Of course, Dairy Queen. Did you say Dairy Queen? Well, maybe I didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Dairy Queen. <laughs> okay. Uh, and of course, she was kidding. This will be similar to the jury and everything in that. They will not have direct access off of parental road, no curb cuts or anything like that. It'll all be off of the back Correct. side of the property off of this road. Right. This road will be a, a functional, basically a reverse frontage road along the inner perimeter. Okay. Uh, privately owned, privately maintained, unnamed. All these parcels will have an inner perimeter road address. Um, it's very similar to the Drury situation, except the property is actually less complicated. Have a backyard front of the road. Correct. The front of the road says along the road will be behind, running down the middle of the property, which is actually how it was built originally, just to put a driveway in. But now we're having to design and develop around it. So okay. To lock it down. Any other questions or discussion from the board or with Matt, the staff? Anyone here? For this, and if so, would you like to forgive, give us any additional information? Or my name is Clayton Milligan. I'm with Level Engineering at 3998 Inner Perimeter Drive. I'm here representing Gray Murray. He's still avoiding Auburn's loss this weekend. <laughs> I couldn't be here today if he was not um, I think Matt covered it pretty well. The only thing I might add, I think. When Gray started developing this property, it was under before the new our current LDR was in place. So some of the original master planning, and I believe when Wood Nichols put in, was prior to the LDR. So some of the stuff that would have worked in the old code is now we're trying to make it all fit back together. Um, the the main reason for us having to do a private right of way instead of just an easement is he's wanting to subdivide the parcels. If you look at your um, the flat here tracks four or five, four or five mainly, those couldn't be subdivided out without frontage on a private or public road. So this is just kind of allowing the flexibility for him to be able to subdivide those out to separate parcels as this whole piece gets developed. And track four will have enough access. They'll have to keep at least 60 feet of frontage on that road, and that's about what they're showing there. Right, that was, we arrived at that around that corner at 60 foot. Of okay. And those are not proposed to be subdivided yet. They're not actual lots. It's coming four and five actually may sell together as one piece. Right, I understand that. Five right. may become two pieces, depends on which purchaser comes along. Right, but if four ended up as a standalone by itself lot, it would still be criteria for front engine size and all that stuff. It would. Okay, good. The kicker is this right here. That's got right. to be 60 feet. Right. So it can be smaller. Correct. Not without a variance. And as I would speak to, as far as utilities, every lot is currently has access to water or sewer. So there won't need to be any more sewer extensions. Water services would have to be. One water service has to be bored for track five underneath the private road. But other than that, everyone else has, has water sewer access as a road. Eventually, when it's all developed, wouldn't you dedicate the road back to the city? 
Greg would prefer to keep it in a homeowners, in a homeowners, a property owners association where they have control over. Because what's also going to be in there, there's a regional detention pond on the back that doesn't show it. It's cut off here. I think it's on the one in your packet. It's more the yeah, like it's Lori Drive. Yeah, it's on the back side. It's a shared detention pond for all of us. And Gray had pretty tight um, agreements that, that he signed with the people that, that uh, buy his property on the public's development, the Murphy Oil, the bank across the street, um, Farmers and Merchants, Harrison Bank, but all the lighting, he has pretty tight architectural controls. He, he's trying to keep it looking nice. So his, his intent is to keep all of that as and within the property owners association. I might have a question for Matt. Um, on a private road, um, so whatever landscaping designs that the city has, they are not, they don't have to do that on a private road? They do. They do. It's actually one of the preferences that this be a private right of way instead of simply an access easement. Um, one of the landscape requirements is you have a street yard along the street frontage, mm -hmm. and that doesn't matter if it's public or private, it's still triggered. So they still have to So follow. they will have to landscape along this private road the same as if it's a public road. So, so making it a private, a private right of way, private road actually will increase the landscape requirements on the frontage on either side of this, as opposed to if we just did. And that's one of the considerations we use when we're looking at when we're reviewing a brewery's proposal. So they were facing the same question. Um, and the advantages of having a reduced right of way width that actually allows more room outside that boundary line, which is now private property, as part of the restaurants or the retail stores, is actually have a little more room. All the pieces fit there, just a little more easily. Any other questions? Any other discussion? Thank you, sir. I'm assuming no one else is here for opposition, whatever. We had no contact in our office regarding this case. Okay. Okay, you've heard. It. Any questions? Any discussion? Did I entertain a motion? I so move that this variance be approved, uh, signing both conditions that were noted by Mr. Matt. Second. I have a motion from Dr. Housel, second from Ms. Gaskins, to accept as presented with the conditions noted in staff, numbers one and two. Please make that a part of the minutes. All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, good luck with it. We make it look good for the city and all the town. Okay, and that concludes the business part of our actual hearing. Uh, I would like to welcome Ms. Fowler. She is the uh, new member that will be taking over for Scott Orenstein, I assume, in January. Uh, welcome to the board. Thank you. Or it might be condolences. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you're all here that way. She gets to meet each other. At the time she had not been to one of these, and we thought it was a good idea that she come sit in on one or actually sitting up there. Uh, this this one was a tiny one. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you again. I have minutes. Anybody got any changes? I get a motion to accept as presented. So moved. I have a motion, Ms. Quarterman. Do I have a second, Ms. Holly? All in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, any I know we've got election of chair and vice chair that were appointed last month. All in favor of accepting the slate as presented, please raise a hand. All opposed. Oh. oh, no. Wait. Sorry. I'm not paying attention. He's busy. Hey, I wondered what it was. I was trying to translate something from English to Spanish to English. I was like, oh. sorry. Okay. Thank you. Right. Can, can, I, can I change my vote to unanimous? Unanimous with a two way extension of being myself and Gretchen, being that we're the ones who are being voted on. 
Okay. Uh, any other new business, old business, anything we need to talk about from the staff standpoint? Already adopted the schedule for 2015. All right. The only other thing to talk about is if you want to do celebratory things for the holidays, which we have done sometimes in the past. I think we should go to Nancy's house. <laughs> oh, that's a good time. Oh, you have a good time. You really did. <laughs> Well, if something is put together, we will notify everybody or, can, or ask their opinions of it and before we do anything. <laughs> before we vote on it. Before we vote on it. Before we vote on it. <laughs> okay, if there's no other business. I will call the meeting adjourned. Thank you very much for your attention and attendance, ladies and gentlemen.